In this video, I'd like to get a little bit in depth about fields so that you can get an understanding of just how powerful fields can be inside of OpenOffice. Now, as we talked about in the previous video, fields will automatically calculate certain things for you, like what the current time in your document is, how many pages you have saved in your document, and in this case, the subject and title of the document, which you actually have to set for the field to work in File, Properties, and then the Description tab. That is the metadata we were talking about in the Properties video. Now, these fields on screen represent the ones you would find in Insert, Fields, and then the Base List. But there's actually a whole other section, a whole dialog window that you can open up by hitting Control F2 on your keyboard or clicking Other in the Fields section, which will give you five different tabs that you can play around with in order to create complicated and powerful fields that will calculate certain things for your document. For instance, if you wanted to grab some of the data that OpenOffice Writer has in the background behind the scenes and actually put that in your document visibly, then you can do that in the Documents tab where you can get information about the author, the chapters in your document if you've actually set any, the date and time in many different kinds of formats, the name of your file with or without the extension and the path to get to that file on your computer or network, the page numbering and information about the previous and next page in almost any numbering style you want, personal and business information in the sender type, statistics about your document that you would also find under the properties dialog window, information about the template that you're basing your current document off of, and I should mention, by the way, that even a new document that's completely blank is in itself a template. It's just one without anything actually contained within it. And lastly, date and time information. On the cross-references tab, you're able to actually take elements of your page, specific ones like bookmarks, and actually calculate certain things like what page is that bookmark on. But in order to do that, you actually have to have special fields like headings or bookmarks contained within your document. So if I create a new page here, for instance, and I go up to insert and bookmark, then I will get this dialog window, insert bookmark. I can insert it as bookmark one, and now I can actually reference that. The bookmark itself is invisible, but it's contained within the document. One way we can actually see it is if we hit F5 to open up the navigator, it'll be contained as bookmark one. So if I go back up here to the top, double click bookmark one, you'll see that it takes me down here to page two the moment I click on it. Now we can go back up to the Insert Fields Other to get to the Cross References tab again. And if we wanted to make a reference to that bookmark one, we can select the type of reference we want to make, like the page, uh, choose a location. We don't have to fill in a value here because it's automatically calculated. Select where we want to put it. For instance, I can put it here on the first page. It'll say two because it's referring to the page number of bookmark one. No matter where I put it, it's going to be calculated based off of the positioning of bookmark one. And that's what it means by cross-reference. It's referencing other elements of your document in order to calculate the information. On the functions tab of fields, we can get into different kinds of fields which borderline on programming code yourself. So these are functions which are almost certainly not going to be touched by the average person. But for instance, we could do certain conditions like if something is true, then give us an output, else give us another output. And you'd have to actually look up the reference documents to get these kinds of things. But we could do user underscore first name, which is one of the variables of OpenOffice. If that's equal to, let's say, Chris, uh, then give us a five, else give us a three. Uh, for wherever we actually insert this field, and we'll insert it right where the cursor's at. Now, the reason that didn't work is because I forgot to put in the quotation marks representing a string, and that's pretty standard across programming. But now if I try to insert it again, it'll say 5. Yes, it is true. The user's first name is Chris. So there we did a conditional text function, which was correct. Another example of what you can use these functions for is to actually execute macros, of which there are many within OpenOffice. And you can kind of think of macros as all of the different functions you have on these OpenOffice menus. So this is getting into some pretty complicated stuff here. But for instance, I can go to macro and then uh, click here to select a macro on the macro button, of course. We'll go OpenOffice macros 
let's say hello world adds the string hello world into the current text document. So I select that, that's going to be the macro. When the macro triggers, it's going to insert hello text or hello world in theory. And what this field does is when it's clicked on, it's going to execute the macro. So it's like creating a button on the web if you've ever seen that kind of thing. And, and there, bam, it worked. Fantastic. Now we're going to stop there with the functions tab because going further gets into some very advanced topics. Now in the doc information tab, you would see a lot of the same information that you would find in file properties to bring up the properties dialog window. But in here, you can actually put all of it and then even more beyond that into your document as a field if you want. For instance, if you set keywords, you can actually put those in a header, in a footer, just a random place in your document, whatever you need. The subject of your document, the title, revision numbers, what the last time it was printed, uh, for instance, author, time, date. Of course, that's not going to have any information there because this document was never printed. So let's try um, created, author, time, date. Bam, three fields, gives us all the information we want right there. Very quick way to add in extra information. Now on the variables tab, we can have symbols or different phrases actually be associated with a number that we can change, hence why it's called a variable, uh, inside of an open office writer document. You would think, okay, it's just a system for writing stuff, but no, it can actually store mathematical data as well. You don't necessarily have to be in uh, open office math in order to do that. So a couple things we can actually do with the variables tab of fields is to set a variable and to show a variable as we're actually adding a field into the document. So if we set a variable with the field, we put in a name of the variable down here, such as, let's say, hello cupcake, why not? Value 500. And the moment we insert this, it's not only going to show 500 within the field, but it's also going to create a variable here called hello cupcake and immediately set that to 500. We could likewise show that variable by double clicking on this and hitting insert. And then bam, we're good to go. And just to prove that the variable actually changed to 500, I will set it again, same name. We can actually quicken that by selecting it in the selection. Set it to zero. And now we do a show variable of hello cupcake and we get a zero. Now you can get more complicated with this, being able to set variables that you can reference not only from here, but other aspects of OpenOffice Writer. But once again, like the functions tab, that's a very advanced topic and we're not going to delve too much into it right here and now. With the database tab of OpenOffice Writer, we can take any data sources we've associated with our document and draw information out of the columns and fields contained within that data source. For instance, if we have a database that has a long list of author names, book prices, or copies sold, we can draw from those fields and insert that information straight into an Office Writer document. However, don't worry about that too much for now. We're going to cover that in the more advanced videos towards the end of the series and our databases video. So until the next one, I'll see you then.